Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome back to another episode of my F1 23, my team career mode. This is episode number 33 today for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix in season two. If you guys did miss the previous one at the home GP, the British Grand Prix, then check it out before you see this one, because that was a very explosive episode in uh, more, there, more ways than one. Tell my gearbox about it. Uh, and also for Carlos Sainz, as we, for the first time, saw the glitch where an AI drives into the tyre barrier trying to still come into the pit lane for the very first time uh, ourselves. You know, I've seen it many times on some of the Reddit React videos, but we finally had our own moment where Sainz just drove straight into the wall after a collision with Logan Sargent. And in the end of it, it was actually uh, another Brit, to be fair, that had got glory at the British GP. George Russell took his first victory of the season. Ricardo managed to get on the podium, which was very, very solid. He was leading the race at one point, but it just wasn't meant to be he ended up on th in third place and like I said an explosive one for us as our gearbox went pop and that was a bit unfortunate we already had a pretty tough race anyway having broken our front wing so it, it seemed like all the cards were stacked against us in that episode it was unfortunate it hurts more that it was the home Grand Prix but we've got to bounce back now and we've got Azerbaijan coming up which is a sprint race weekend so double the chance to make up for what happened at Silverstone but to the effect of the gearbox going pop, we are going to now plow in some more resources into durability. To be, to be fair to me, I think you guys will agree, this season, I've actually spent more time on durability than I usually would in most other previous F1 games. I've actually spent quite a bit on durability. Usually I don't even bother getting to like level two columns of durability. But on this year's game, it seems like they've really tweaked the balances where the engine parts are wearing out quite a lot and the last episode, that just caught me off guard in terms of how the gearbox went. I think it was at like 30% wear, so nowhere near even going, and it was just an unfortunate uh, you know, mechanical failure basically of the gearbox, but we're trying to you know, negate that a little bit with the durability upgrade, and of course we do have an upgrade in terms of performance coming in because you saw there the engine power upgrade came in for us, so that is going to make sure we stay on top of being the best engine on the grid, and to my surprise also, the weight reduction, the ultimate weight reduction also came in. There was enough time till this Grand Prix and the activity timeline for that to come in. So two pretty big upgrades because I think it was a major engine power upgrade and then ultimate weight reduction. And coming into Baku and then we go to Monza, I think pretty perfect timing for, uh, for a major engine power upgrade and ultimate weight reduction. These two things are what you think about when you think about going quicker at Baku and Monza, you know, long straights. So I think the timing is really perfect for us. And we we do have a large cash surplus at the moment so I went back to the HQ side of things and wanted to invest in the personnel. I did think about the simulator upgrade but that cost I think 14 million I think it was. They've really made that last upgrade really expensive now on F123 whereas it's only 8 million to get the last tier uh, on the uh, fitness center in the personnel which boosts things like the awareness, the racecraft, and focus. All things which are important as well on top of pace so I think with that Hopefully we see an even better Daniel Ricciardo maybe in the last kind of, you know, we're getting to nearly the last third of the season where it, we need Ricciardo to be scoring just a couple of points, you know, and getting, you know, those P7s, P6s to bag points in this fight because we just had Mercedes leap up to second place in the constructors. So we've got a lot of teams chasing us. Merck, Red Bull, uh, Ferrari, of course. But a big bonus here is into Baku, we have this obviously ultimate upgrade and major upgrade, and that takes us back towards the top of the standings if it wasn't for Aston Martin. They equal our upgrades, as do Red Bull. It's hard to see there, but basically now the pecking order is uh, Aston Martin, ourselves, Red Bull and Ferrari. We've all leapfrogged Ferrari, who have plateaued a bit. Alpine making some gains. They've leapfrogged McLaren and are now in the fight with Haas and Mercedes on paper in terms of the performance index. So interesting stuff. I really thought the AI teams around us were going to be catching us so quickly now that they've fixed that you know, reduced and boosted R&D issue. But, you know, we've actually had some, we've made some clever upgrades and we've kept kind of pace. And to be fair, maybe it's just a case of the AI, they're needing to spend money on HQ facilities to actually unlock more upgrades. So either way, I'm actually quite surprised at where our car is. So we've got to make the most of it, continue to make the most of it. And at Baku, with an ultimate rate reduction upgrade and major engine power upgrade, You'd think I would be gleaming at how quick the car feels and how good it is. 
Now I say you think because, oh no, no, my God, did this car feel absolutely awful. My God, I know it's been a couple of days since the last episode, but uh, I don't know what ha has happened. There's been a patch since then. So I don't know if the patch has done anything, but my God, this car felt so bad on the first opening lap. You can see on the second flying lap in Q2, didn't even bother to show you the first one. We've gained 1.3 seconds because I was so unconfident on the braking and on power. Now, I have a theory. I think, ironically, we've made the car too powerful in terms of the engine. In terms of aero, I had a look. We're actually in the bottom half of the table for aerodynamics. So my theory is I've made the engine and the car too light to handle the power. And we don't have enough aero to deal with it. And for the player, me, that's very bad. Because into the corners, I'm going so much quicker. So the brakes feel worse. And then mid-corner, every apex you take... We're going that much quicker because of the extra power, also the lightweight chassis, but we don't have the downforce for me to feel comfy enough to rotate the car. So for me, the car actually feels so much worse than it did at Silverstone, ironically. Uh, for Ricardo, obviously our teammate, AI computer teammate, bit more perfect than a human, uh, he's looking okay. He was, you know, very, very quick in Q1, and in Q2 here, I only had one set of soft tyres to use because I burned two of them in Q1 and it's a sprint weekend so you get less tyres to use. So this is my second flying lap in Q2 on a used set of softs because I had already used a new set for the first lap which wasn't good enough and our second lap we do gain but it's not enough to get us into Q3. We are knocked out in Q2. P11, and I had, there's literally no excuse. I just, got, I couldn't find any more time. I had no more confidence in the car to go any later into the brake zones, to get on the power earlier, try and rotate the car. Uh, I, I'm not sugarcoating it. I'm literally not lying to you. This car felt awful. It felt so bad <laughs> compared to Silverstone. I'm really quite worried. I've now put myself in a very difficult position because now we need to get some downforce on this car ASAP. That absolutely has to be the next upgrades we bring to this car. But that's going to take some time, you know, it might take two to three races. And in that time, I'm worried that I'm still going to be feeling bad in the car and other people in the championship might close up. The only solace is Ricardo, the AI teammate. He's looking pretty solid. P4 there for him. He's into Q3. So at least he's going to be performing better because he's got pin perfect braking, etc. And in the corners pretty well. But for me, yeah, it's struggle town. I really, really can't drill it home to you how bad that car felt. I literally was just tapping the brakes and they felt like they were locking up because there was so much more power coming through the engine but we had no aero to slow it down properly and control it mid corner as well so yeah struggle town very very odd thing to say but an ultimate and major upgrade to this car have made it feel worse a lot worse and I don't know if race conditions are going to help that at all I guess we're going to find out in this sprint race now at Baku we're going to start on the soft compound as is our teammate on the front row yep Ricardo making use of the upgrades on the front row for the sprint has a chance for the front row in the full Grand Prix. For us, it's time to make up positions from P11. Hopefully the soft versus medium is going to help us out and negate the feeling we've had in the car in Quali on Fridays. We go to lights out and we're underway. Russell very much is not as we nearly have a carbon copy repeat of Silverstone. We nearly go into the back of Russell. We did apparently make a little bit of contact with him, but I don't think there's any damage from that. The staff and all also had another shocking start like he did in Austria. And so we are up into P9. Two positions gained from Verstappen and Russell's poor start. Uh, no damage to the car, thankfully, as I asked my engineer about that. But that was very, very sketchy there. Russell pretty much didn't move off the line. As in the lead still, I think, is the Ferrari of Leclerc as we pounce down the inside of Hamilton. And right now, at least, on this opening lap, the car is feeling a little bit more compliable than it did in Quali, I think, relative to the other cars. But that's also because, like I said, we're on softs. We know the delta time difference and the way the grip is is so much bigger now on this game. Soft to medium, medium to hard. So we need to make the, the most use of this choice of going on the soft tyre. It's why I was confident going on to it because I knew it would give us that advantage, as it will to Daniel Ricciardo, who is still in second place. Gasly in third, Albon fourth, Magnus in P5. Very, very strange top five, I must say. I mean, Leclerc, yeah, Ricciardo, yeah, but Gasly, Albon and Magnus in the top five. Very 
very strange. The two Red Bulls down here, Verstappen P10, Norris P7, but for how much longer as we're all over the back of him is make a little bit of contact as Norris goes defensive to the inside, but all over him. I think we can definitely get him now on this slingshot now to the next lap onto the main straight. Just try and get the power down. Plenty of battery on the opening lap, and then we can move on to Carlos Sainz. And, uh, well, hopefully we can make quick, uh, quick work of Magnus. Oh, what the? Are you okay? Don't what just happened there? Okay? What the? Our car just exploded on the wall. We gave it a slight love tap, and the whole thing exploded on the left. The barrier has absolutely murdered our race. And it's the rear tyre that's actually gone inside the Tech Pro barrier. I think it's glitched slightly into the wall and, uh, well, clouted it and broken the suspension off the rear. Cleanly cuts it off there. And then that also breaks our front as well. Oh my god. In a race weekend where we are already feeling the lowest confidence possible because of what happened in quali, P11, needing to make up positions, the pressure's on, and then that's happened. On lap one of the sprint. Ah. Uh. We're having, we're having a Checo. We're, we're, we're doing a Checo. We're having a Checo weekend right here. That is literally the opposite of what we needed. We needed to build confidence in this sprint. And that has absolutely wiped my confidence. And Ricardo's won. Oh, my days. Ricardo's won the sprint. Ricardo has won. I mean, congratulations to our teammate. He's gone and overtaken Leclerc. Leclerc's fallen away down to third place. Ricardo wins the sprint and is now on pole position for tomorrow's full Grand Prix, but we are all the way down in last place. You know, some big hitters. Gasly up there in the top four. Kudos to him. But yeah, for us, it's P22 now for the full Azerbaijan Grand Prix. And I still don't know if the car's going to feel any better in the race because I didn't have a race there. I had, I had what? I had eight tenths of a lap. That was it. Ah, oh, I can't believe that. That's the worst timing ever for me to have like some sort of glitch or contact or just bad luck with the barrier. I, I knew we tapped it because I heard the, the sound of our of the side wall tapping, but I just thought, okay, we'll maybe have a little graze with the wall. The rear end, the rear tire had other ideas. The front tire was fine until the rear tire said, now nah, I'm out of here and just broke cleanly off on the, on the barrier. Ah, oh. right. Well, we need to turn this around uh, majorly. So far though, race weekend, not going, not going so well. A warm welcome to you all at home for today's Azerbaijan Grand Prix. A race that in its short history has already proven no stranger to drama. And where a fourth row start is just about as likely to give you a podium as pole position. With Lance Stroll and Sergio Perez finishing third from there in 2017 and 2018 respectively. The Baku city circuit measures roughly six kilometers and it's made up of 20 corners and two DRS zones. The circuit winds around the narrow city, through the old town, and even brushes against the city's medieval walls. However, as beautiful as the setting is, this track is also a ferocious technical challenge, where the smallest of mistakes could lead to a catastrophic consequence for any one of our drivers. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Daniel Ricciardo starts from pole position today. Just edging out Alex Albon, who'll start from P2. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Gasly, Norris, Sainz, Fernando Alonso, Hamilton, Verstappen, Magnussen, Ocon, Russell, Bottas, Sargent, Oscar Piastri, Perez, Joe, Stroll, Sonoda, Liam Lawson, Hulkenberg, and the owner driver rounds off the grid. Now it's time to head down to the track. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box. and it's fantastic to have you with us here, but I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into Turn 1, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It will keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. This is turning into a very strange race weekend. We've got these upgrades. For me, they've made the car feel worse. 
Clearly for Danny and Ricardo, they have very much not, and he is reaping the benefits from these upgrades because he just won the sprint, he's on pole for this race, and we know from Monaco, he's very good at controlling a race around a street circuit, he had a chance at Silverstone, bit of a different circuit there. Around Baku, he might find it easier to control the race and pull away like he did around the Principality, and for me, I'm at the I'm at the other end of the grid, there's no other way to say it. We're, we've got the, at least we've got the most two important positions in a race first place and last place at least that's what i'm telling myself right now as we try and pick ourselves up from this pit of despair of what is happening so far in this race weekend as we try and fire up the tires and get ready to slot in into last place we're on the hard compound we're taking our engineer's recommendation like we did in montreal going long on the hards this car has gone well on the hardest compound actually over the course of this game so why not let's try something different to try and jump ourselves up the order as we go to five red lights to the azerbaijan grand prix from last place our teammates on pole it's a good start for us as we jump Nico Hulkenberg and try to pick off some positions. Getting a bit frosty though with Joe in the Sauber. Liam Lawson re-overtakes this as I try to overtake him as well in the Williams but he's nipped ahead into P18. Big dive bomb though from us to get ahead of him and Joe. I say maybe ahead of him but he's actually done quite well through the left-hander to still be neck and neck with this as we're deploying D uh, ERS all the way down this straight but the Williams is keeping up with us which I found a bit strange to be honest because we very much have the best engine ever and also a very very lightweight car and yet even deploying full battery the Williams keeping up with me there so uh, yeah I, I don't know I get the feeling the AI are quite quick in a straight line I don't know whether it's you know maybe running too high wings you know I put the wing uh, up by one on the front end I put it down by two on the rear end so we should be pretty slippery compared to their default setup but that Williams of Lawson was pretty quick and even here with Stroll we're gaining but it's not rapidly uh, I know we're saving battery here but still as we go for the move on Stroll he's able to try and match us and this is what I'm talking about in the brake zone from Quali I just don't have that confidence to really get late on the brakes and outdo him he is on soft tyres and Stroll oh my god nearly puts us in the wall there the Canadian really really wanting to maintain P17 there he is on two steps uh, softer compound attire which will explain why he's got more grip in the corners but at the same time our car is so much better than the Williams on paper you would think you know being on hards that wouldn't matter just like in real life you know the Red Bull if he's on harder compound won't matter they'll get him eventually or they'll get him pretty quickly uh, I just wasn't feeling that level of performance over the Williams as Sainz oh no for two races in a row is uh, going to score no points in the full GP he disqualified last time out at Silverstone and it's an engine failure for him as he pulls up and we gain one free position up to P16 and boy do we need all the positions we can get here today because it's lap six and we're jockeying for position with Logan Sargent for P16 and 15. What is going on in this race? What? Where is the pace in this car? There is no pace. At this point in Canada, I think obviously we weren't last place, but we were looking pretty solid on the hards. But now this car on hard tyres doesn't even look that punchy. Uh, obviously, yes, there does need to be a bit of tyre wear for the soft tyre runners, the medium tyre runners, which is now lap 11. We're up to P12 because a few people have started to make their first pit stops in this race off those softs, off those mediums, like the case with Oscar Piastri, the Mercedes, the uh, Aston Martin and Alpine of Alonso and Ocon, respectively. So we're now up into P8, chasing after Valtteri Bottas on the softs, who's still going pretty damn strong on lap 12. And honestly, I'm thinking about maybe coming in off these hards because they're so bad not now on this lap because Ricardo's just come in so he's ruined that plan I did actually want to come in on this lap but I don't want to double stack behind him so we'll make the overtake on Bottas and go on for one more lap but honestly I, I may come in on lap 13 the, the, the pit stop window starts on lap 14 to be fair so it's not a long long stint on the hards and I can see why here because at Baku compared to Canada there isn't much advantage of the hards they still wear out so much and this is uh well quite Quite embarrassing actually Ricardo pits and he's actually come out ahead of us he's made a pit stop he's a whole pit stop ahead of us Ricardo is so I know he was on pole but still I thought we would have gained enough 
positions and places in this race, but apparently not, as the two Red Bulls lead the way. They're yet to pit, though, by the way. So Norris leads from Verstappen, then it's Ricardo in third and Leclerc in fourth. Ricardo and Leclerc have pit. The two Red Bulls are still going on on medium ties. I think Ricardo and Leclerc started on softs. We start on hards, and we've come in two laps after Ricardo came in off softs. Just tells you a lot about how this race is going for us. Um, yeah, the hard tire strategy really did not work around here. Very much the opposite of Canada. There was so much tire wear, especially on the rear ends. And that's because I think, like my theory is, we've got so much power in this car now. It's spinning up my rear tires and causing me tire wear on the rear end. Oh, as Logan Sargent spins it. Speaking about spinning up the rear tires, the American is spun round. We gain one free position there into uh, P17. P, P, yeah, cool. Uh, free position to P17. Oh, love it. Love, love it. Oh, what is going on this race? What is going on? Honestly, this race is really confirming to me. I think we have too much power in this car because I think the tyre wear was about 10 percentile more on the rears than the front on those hard tyres. Uh, so I think that tells you everything, that there's just too much power. There's too much spinning up on the rear. So yeah, next upgrades absolutely have to be downforce upgrades as we see the two Aston Martins pretty much pushing each other up through the castle section. It's, oh, Sergio Perez loses it though. Sergio Perez goes way too hot into the Baku castle section. He's crashed. The Merc has crashed. It's a safety car. No, it's a red flag at Baku. It's a classic castle crash. And the Merc, Russell, last race's race winner. He's got no front wing. And he's going to be, at, uh, I think, maybe out of the whole race, maybe. And it's a red flag. Okay, this is maybe a chance to change our fortunes because I'm being recommended the soft tyre and I kind of agree. I wanted confirmation from my engineers. They were thinking the same thing because, you know, up until the barrier, we were actually going quite well in the sprint. So maybe the soft tyre could just save this entire race for us. I don't know where we're starting because we did ghost through some cars at the castle section, but we won't be at least P17. I think we'll, we would have gained some positions on the grid. So this is half a chance now to try and rectify and claw back some kind of points, limit the damage to Lando Norris, who now, by the way, I think leads the race. The two Red Bulls had not pit in this race, and now they're going to be starting with a front row lockout because of the red flag. Really bad luck for Ricardo. Great luck for them as we go to lights out from P15. So we gained two positions in that red flag ghosting situation and now looking to make the overtake on the two McLarens who have started on the hard tyres. Uh, very, very odd uh, choice, I must say, although we are three wide with one of the uh, McLarens. And also, I think, uh, ooh, I think one of the Williams is three wide with this because Stroll pushes Piastri towards me. Yeah, he's still there. Stroll tried to make it three abreast into that left-hander. We're having a drag race now with the McLaren. And despite, again, deploying a lot of battery, only in the brake zone did we overtake him. Very confusing. You know, the, the engine power is causing the issues, and yet the same engine power can't push me past a lot of these cars even whilst we're deploying ERS um, yeah a lot of question marks and head scratching to do after this race to be honest but for now we're just going to get a head down and focus on this race as we overtake Ocon to get up into P11 and uh, sending a purple last sector I think that might be the first purple I've seen all race weekend you know and we're now up behind Magnus and Russell there's a fight going on with Gasly and I think that's Alexander Albon as we make the dive catch Magnus and napping and uh, Gasly fighting Albon Gasly's on the hard tyre in the Alpine again odd choice to make uh, like with the McLarens you know we've only got you know what, what's that like uh, like no, eight laps to go in this race I don't think the hards are the right choice especially considering how poor they were for me in the first stint as we overtake Russell now this is a bit more like it we finally got a little bit of a groove going up into P9 so we've got two championship points Ricardo on lap 19 though he's in P2 and he's now in the slipstream DRS open and he re-overtakes not only Norris he had already overtaken Verstappen at this point. But Ricardo, fair and square, retakes the lead. The lead he lost just because of the red flag. So that is Ricardo taking matters into his own hands. Whilst we're struggling just to limit the damage, our teammate is flying around Baku and is loving life here around Azerbaijan. As we go around the outside of Joe Granu in the Sauber to get up into P8. And hopefully Gasly next up on the hard should be easy 
easy pickings. At least that's what I thought it would be. Lap 21, Gasly's overtaken Alonso ahead of me, and I'm actually here defending against George Russell on the outside. We get a rear lock, and we almost spin it into the wall, into Russell. I don't know how we've actually kept that going as we drifted through on the curb uh, to keep P9 at least and keep this race going, but that could have been an absolute cat a catastrophic crash because the rear just locked at the worst time as we now see Verstappen and Norris side by side. Ricardo's got breathing room with only a lap and a bit to go. He's two seconds ahead in the lead now. Norris keeps second place. Leclerc gets up into third. He's going to go for second. The Ferrari wants to make it two Red Bulls for one, and he can't manage it. Norris keeps the P2. Leclerc, though, gets himself onto the podium. Verstappen continuing to struggle a bit in the Red Bull versus Norris as Gasly gets up into P5. So you know how I was making fun of him and McLaren choosing the hards? It actually ended up being the better decision because now my soft tyres on the rear end have worn out so much. I've got really no pace. Russell overtook me and he's gapped me by, well, six seconds now. Yeah, six seconds in like two, three laps. Really, really poor. We only just about managed to defend against Ocon to try and keep P9. But this is the man of the moment in this team. It's his time to shine this race weekend, as it was in Monaco. He's won the sprint, he was on pole for the full Grand Prix, and he's going to win the full Azerbaijan Grand Prix. It's Daniel Ricciardo's second race win this season for this team. It is all Rick Bobby today. Norris second, Leclerc third, and we, well, the best we could do in terms of limiting the damage to Norris and anyone chasing us is P9, two championships points for this entire weekend oh my god uh, th I'm not lying when I said this is this has been the most difficult race weekend of the entire game so far it really has been a nearly flawless performance here then and a commanding victory tell me out how do they manage to achieve this win I really feel the track layout combined with the track temperatures we saw today suited their car these cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature, and the driver did a great job managing that as well. They just look so comfortable out there. It's like anything, it always looks so easy when it all just clicks. Welcome then to the podium, our top three drivers. What a great effort from them today in a very difficult race. Take a bow, Daniel Ricciardo. He has absolutely dominated this race weekend. The sprint, the, the full race, he's got maximum points he could in this race weekend, apart from maybe the fast lap of the Grand Prix, but we'll see if he got that as well. If he has, then he's maximised everything. So whilst I'm floundering this race weekend, he's actually been the team leader. He's got some great points for our team. If it wasn't for him, we might have actually lost first place to the constructors because the two Red Bulls would have been, you know, at least with a double podium, but he's got the win and pushed one of the Red Bulls off the podium, thanks to Leclerc as well. Um, so there you go, 33 points in the bag, so no fastest lap for a Ricardo, but still 33 points to two for me that's a big haul of points and uh, to be fair this vindicates us in terms of re-signing him he's got that confidence building that focus still and obviously remember he's got that HQ upgrade on the way for the fitness center which will boost his awareness and racecraft and focus even more which will be incredible for him um, so I, I hate to think what kind of Daniel Ricardo we're gonna have from next episode with that upgrade in off the back of a race win for us yeah, P9, we lose, well, not surprisingly, we lose the lead of the championship. Eight points now behind Lando Norris. So we're back to being the hunter versus our fellow compatriot. Ricardo is now all of a sudden third place, 33 points off the lead. So he's the next nearest person in this fight between myself and Lando. And then the constructors, like I said, thanks to Ricardo, we're still in first place. Red Bull now get back into second place after a strong performance after a, a kind of so-so Silverstone GP. So yeah, I mean, great for Ricardo, uh, but just just very, very confusing. I really am quite curious to see what this car is going to feel like at Monza. The Temple of Speed, you know, it really should feel pretty okay, but I think the problems with the wheel spin and the power delivery is actually so bad that even at Monza, it might be a difficulty. I don't know. I guess we're going to have to find out next time, but if you guys have enjoyed this one, then be sure to hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Let me know your theories. What do you make of it? Do you think, do you agree with my theory that I think we've made the car basically too quick now in a straight line and it 
can't handle its own power in the hands of me at least not ricardo let me know if you if you agree with that kind of statement and if you are new around here do get subscribed to find out if these struggles are going to continue next time at the italian grand prix till then guys hope you enjoy the rest of the day goodbye